Los Angeles, the only friend of Anthony Kiedis, the place where people with big dreams go to fulfill their even bigger Ozempic prescriptions. A decade ago, Vulture began showcasing the comedians who ruled the LA scene even before the algorithm knew who they were. This year, we are zooming into the lives of our 12 LA honorees straight from the Vulture spot. All of this brought to you by our favorite treat, rum chata, making every moment a bit more special. I'm not saying put this in your coffee, but I'm not not saying it. My comedy is uh, respectfully horny. So you're gonna get some, it's, it's blue, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna know that it's blue because right. I'm using corporate language, you see. You also have a very funny joke about being an insecure Asian guy. So tell me the story behind that. One of my friends was like, oh, you should watch Insecure. There's like a really hot Asian guy. I like typed it in with a show type of Asian guy, but, but I was only getting like weird looking Asian dude. And I realized I forgot to type in HBO. So I just Googled insecure Asian guy. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> My comedy is timeless jokes about being a gay, indigenous person living in Los Angeles who moved from LA, who grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. How did that shape you comedically? I got really used to being under bright lights. Are you talking about the sun? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> A, a nature spotlight, the sun. Uh, I am indigenous and, you know, when I tell people that sometimes they're like, do you have a traditional like indigenous name, like Crazy Horse or Sitting Bull or something like that? And I'm like, no, I don't. But if I did have one, it would be Chipotle Bathroom Code. <laughs> I'm Canadian, I moved to America this year. I wanted to see it before it ends. <laughs> I think there's a lot of Canadian comics that have a lot of success just because you get that sort of one degree of being an outsider for lack of a better word. And, and the stakes are sort of different for us because like we can always go home and get medicine or whatever. My comedy is I should have been more prepared for this. <laughs> okay. Perfect answer. I should say that I'm a black person, but I'm the kind of black person that has to announce it to the room before I do a race joke. As a biracial man in America, <laughs> which side do you think is currently winning? Oh, in terms of the race war? Yes. Oh, well, I feel like, to be completely honest, I, you know, I don't think I saw it coming. It was a long shot, but I think mixed people are starting to... <laughs> <laughs> we're starting to take over. Uh, and I think that means, you know, we'll obviously we'll bring the full black people with us. Like. My comedy is relatable. Okay. I think I am very storytelling oriented sometimes. Because if you DM me to be your sugar baby, get ready for me to ask why your wife left, because I'm going to get in there. Um. Comedy is art. Art history is seen as pretentious. Comedy is sometimes seen as lowbrow. How do you bridge the gap between the two? I have a joke where I say, women are so naturally visually appealing that everything they do could be painted inside a clamshell. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm referring to Venus yes. and people will, la some people will laugh harder because they know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you kind of see people being like, oh yeah, clamshell, that lady, I get it. My comedy is the mission statement that you could make a joke about anything. Serious, sometimes current events, sometimes relationship stuff, sometimes random observations, sometimes nostalgia. Every week we should get rid of a word. <laughs> Every week we should have a vote. Like, anybody using this one? <laughs> no? All right, let's kick it. My intro to stand up is Fozzie Bear. I didn't know comedians could be good for a while. Better <laughs> for you. Well, it wasn't until I stumbled on Seinfeld and I was like, oh, okay, they don't all get tomatoes thrown at them. I say my stand up is dry, it's subtle, it's underhanded, but it's funny. <laughs> like having grandparents is kind of like when you get a rescue dog. Like, you don't know what happened to them before they got to you. <laughs> I'm confident, but I'm just like, the way I talk is a little all over the place. 
Maybe it's the Canadian sensibilities. Well, Americans have the opposite <laughs> problem. All of us are number yeah. one. No, I love it. I want to be as like arrogant as Americans. I want to learn from Americans. I don't want to be. I think you guys are perfect. My comedy is dark, absurd, pretty upsetting, but also you know very funny and people say relatable. I can't believe my life. 9-11 made me gay. This is the site of all my trauma. I started stand-up comedy when I was nine. And you weren't taken away by Child Protective Services? <laughs> no, apparently I wanted it desperately. It was horrible. It was a horrible <laughs> experience. But I also loved it. My stand-up comedy is, I would hope it's bouncy. Like with like, a, there's like a rhythm to it. There's like a flow to it. I was on a date with this girl. She casually dropped she was a witch. She was like, I'm a vegan witch. I hope that's not a deal breaker. I was like, it is. Are witches trying to get at you now? Yes, there've been a lot more witches in my DMs. Uh, shout out to the witches. There's, it wasn't, a, some, some of them were mad. It wasn't a diss record, I promise. <laughs> it was. It was just me kind of being like, yo, unless I see the receipts of you, you know, messing with some ghosts, I kind of don't believe y'all. Uh, my comedy is experimental, weird, uh, very uh, personal at the same time. Family Matters was a show about an autistic kid who terrorized the cop and his family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they said it in the theme song. It's a rare condition. I like to do everything under the catch-all of comedian. Like I've written plays, I've written for TV, I do stand-up. Uh, I just finished a documentary about a vasectomy. I like to, I like to do every, try everything. I'm a physical performer. I don't really consider myself a stand-up. Like I, you know, I trained at a clown school. And Call me Team Rocket because I'm blasting off right now. <laughs> By the way, you guys are stylish. Cargo pants? No, no, no. Cargo vroom. <laughs> uh... Not only do you do stand up, you clown, you also dance a bit. I'm doing I'm doing the best I can out there and it's it's like cringy and it's silly and it's like maybe the only thing I've ever done earnestly in my life is dance. Um but I just I'm a physical performer. I don't really consider myself a stand up. Like I you know, I trained at a clown school and like I've never really told a joke. It's more body stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at the Vulture Spot. I'm Jay Jordan, and this is Rum Chop.